All right, and we're back. Thank you very much for sticking around. I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I'm going to tell you a very quick family story. Ninety years ago, my grandparents met on the shop floor of a small Scottish knitwear factory, fell in love. A couple of generations later, 90 years to be specific, I find myself entering the family business as an advisor to a virtual try-on company. I don't think they'd have wrapped their heads around it, but imagine where we're going to be in another couple of decades or a couple of generations. The next panel is going to help us get there. I would like to welcome on stage Sonia Haskins, who is the head of programming at AWE. Thank you, Sonia. Hello, everybody. We're glad you're here this afternoon. And I am hosting this wonderful panel on fashion. So I'm, as he mentioned, Sonia Haskins, head of programming here at AWE. I don't normally moderate panels, but I'm doing this one for a very specific reason. And part of it is to make the point that this is normally what I wear. This is my fashion. I love white t-shirts. I'm very comfortable in it. And I think that whatever your fashion is, you should be comfortable, right? You know? People should get to wear what they want to wear as far as what makes them feel like themselves. So um, that's kind of what we're going to chat about today and how we can make that possible for others. So I'm going to let my panelists introduce themselves and then we're going to jump into the questions. So Joanna, would you go first and then we'll just go down the road. Sure. Hello, I'm Joanna Hadfield, uh, the co-founder and chief executive of the Global Digital Fashion Awards. Um, and I come from design and fashion. I have launched six brands through design and uh, manufacturing. And the last two years, I've been working in the TV and film industry, making clothing and costume designing, um, making space suits and uh, superhero suits and things like that, fat suits. Uh, and I'm so excited uh, to help discover and educate and celebrate digital fashion. Thank you so much. Tumela? Hi, everyone. I'm Tumelo Sedlaba. Um, I am currently the product lead at The Fabricant and founder of Stylexa. The Fabricant might be familiar to some of you. It's one of the most successful fashion NFT projects, I would say, at the moment and in time. Um, and Stylexa is solving the sizing issue in fashion. Um, by combining shopper biometric data with garment data using 3D body scanning, AI, and a combination of IoT. So in this panel, I think I will be um, the in-between uh, for digital and physical. Um, on one end, uh, fashion NFT is entirely fixated on heading towards the metaverse um, and remaining digital, whereas Stylexa is trying to solve the environmental impact of overproduction in fashion by reducing um, returns. So looking forward to sharing our knowledge with you. Um, and uh, yeah, great to be here. It's a privilege to be on a panel with these great minds. Thank you so much. David? Hi, my name is David Robustelli. I am the creative director at Beyond. Um, Beyond is a digital creative studio, and we mainly focus on virtual fashion and luxury retail uh, from an augmented reality perspective. Uh, for myself, I'm in AR for, I think, over 15 years. Um, yeah, I just reminded that our first AR experience was built, I think, in 27. Um, and that was actually done with Flash and ActionScript. So, we, uh, we come a long way since. Uh, I'm very excited to be here and uh, to discuss uh, virtual fashion. Thank you. Casper? Hi, everyone. I'm Casper. I'm uh, the co-founder of Ready Plan Me. And Ready Plan Me is a, a cross-game avatar platform for the metaverse. Uh, we're connecting a lot of different games and apps together. Today, we have over 4,000 different apps and games. And by doing that, we're giving users a consistent identity they can use across all of those different games and apps that we've been connecting together. So I guess from on this panel, I'm kind of taking this in, in identity infrastructure kind of perspective of how, how identities and the brands and you know, games should be you know, all merged together. And that's kind of the intersection where we are as a company as well. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so I want to ask the audience a question before we get started. Two questions, actually. When you think of fashion, how many of you 
automatically think of the clothing we're wearing, like the way we look, our physical appearance. Raise your hand if that's what fashion means to you. Yeah. How many of you have thought about the fact that fashion isn't just what you're wearing here, but that we can have a different fashion or we can expand that fashion or take that one into the metaverse or virtual worlds, let's say. Let's just try not to use the word metaverse in this and we'll say Sorry. virtual worlds or immersive worlds. Have you thought about that a bit? Raise your hand if you have. Which is why you're in this room for this panel, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so to you guys, what I said at the beginning about me, I mean, I've talked with you guys some on chat and everything, and I told you the first thing. I mean, you know, you saw me wearing the same thing because I do feel comfortable in this, but like you all look so classy and, you know, just beautiful in what you're wearing. So how is fashion important? And what does it mean for, um, I think I mentioned to you the first time we chatted that when I'm in immersive reality, I want to look really good, okay? So um, what does this mean? Why do people, you know, like let's say, why is this comfortable here, but it's different for me in immersive reality? Is that important? Are these questions we should be asking? So a couple of different questions there, but who wants to take a shot at that? Well, I think it's interesting that we can be who we want to be in the immersive world. And that fashion, uh, digital fashion, is a way to onboard a lot of people because they are interested in how they are perceived in, in fashion. And so it's a, it's a low bar to entry to be interested in digital fashion and get into the immersive world through Ready Player Me and the Fabricant, these things. Yeah, I agree, I totally agree. And what about you guys? Well, I think it's important for, for people to be able to express themselves, you know, either in the real world or in the virtual world. And I think it's funny to see because when we are, you know, doing things with virtual fashion, we were also like working with Ready Player Me characters and dressing them. Uh, all our colleagues have like uh, an avatar. It's very funny to see how certain people, um, you know, act with, with virtual fashion because so some people just dress themselves exactly the same as in the real world, <laughs> yeah. and others you know, go way beyond that and, and, and do much more creative or stuff that's not really possible in the real world. But I think, um, yeah, I mean, uh, being able to express yourself and giving people the choice, I think that's very important. Yeah, I think when we talk about fashion, uh, fashion is such a scary word for people because it's maybe associated with high-end and hood couture, etc. But sorry to be all devil wears Prada on you, Sonia, but everybody is touched by the fashion industry and everybody is subject to those decisions that are made from the top of the funnel, which is at Fashion Week, right down to what you and I wear every day. Fashion is apparel. And fortunately or unfortunately, we all have to wear clothing, <laughs> at least <laughs> most of the time. So all of us are affected by fashion, and therefore, I think all of us should care. And I think when you talk about physical and digital, we're really participating in the digital space, every single one of us in this room. On your Instagram account, you're not posting yourself in your undies, and you're not posting yourself in your worst items most of the time. You're, you're posting yourself in the best way that you can present yourself. And so that is a digital decision on the apparel that you are wearing that is expressed through, you know, physical and digital. So we're all participating, Sonia. Yeah, I think it's yeah. great. Everyone, yeah. So everyone well, has a say. Did you think it was interesting? I don't know if you guys noticed when I asked those two questions. The first question, how, you know, have you thought about fashion, like your physical fashion, what you wear and stuff. And then the next question, how many of you really thought about digital fashion and like fashion in the immersive worlds? Did you guys notice about half, the double the amount of people raised their hand the second time? Yeah. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. And so it's, that's a little fascinating just because like me, there are many people who maybe aren't as interested. And, and that's a question that when we get forward in a minute, how do we make sure that brands, physical brands, are able to use the immersive fashion and the digital world to actually bring that back into the consumer realm. And so I probably have been more interested in fashion since I started doing VR just because I think, hmm, you know, but I never would have done that before that because it's just something that hadn't interested me previously. But um, that brings us to how we look in immersive reality. Um, Casper, 
how important is it that we create a user experience that people can create the fashion that they want in, in immersive reality? Yeah, I mean, for, for me, like, I guess, like, it kind of, like, already was said, so, like, fashion is a form of, like, uh, self-expression, and that would go to, to the, the degree where I would say even, like, brands are part of someone's identity. Brands believe a concept of values, and, like, the, 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 the thing you wear, like, is an expression to the outside world of what do you believe in, right? Saying that, we should enable anyone to be who they are. So one, one of the funniest things of, you know, us building Ready Player Me and having over, like, so many different, you know, apps and games that are using us, uh, varying from, like, you know, casual games to VR meetings to trainings and so on, we, we actually see this, like, this, this is something, Sonia, you mentioned that, you know, in VR you want to be, a, like, a different version of ourselves. And, and what we actually see is, like, depending on the application, people want to be a different version of themselves. So I'll give you an example. So if you were on a business meeting with your manager, you will probably be the most realistic version of yourself trying to replicate the way you are. If you were to go and play a game with your friends, you want to express your fantasies, your, 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 the creativity inside you wants to go out. So I actually have a lot of different avatars of me that they use depending on the uh, you know, at, uh, occasion. And it's not something that's very new. The examples I can bring from the Web3 world, which is just like you know, Instagrams and LinkedIn's, like the, the version of me on the link, uh, LinkedIn that you look is, is is a version of me, like the, the entrepreneur guy, right? You know, the building outers and kind of like this futuristic stuff. Uh, the version of me on Instagram is a completely different person. If you put those people, you know, side by side, you would see like. I'm someone who has, you know, multi-identity disorder or something like this, <laughs> uh, because that's how people are. Like they perceive themselves in a different way. They're, they're in a closed or, uh, you know, open environment. Uh, and because, virtually speaking, in, in, in immersive environments, it's so easy for us to jump from one place to another. That's the reason why fashion, or in general, like you know, brands being able to uh, uh, offer their, you know, product virtually as well, becomes so important because the ease of use for us to jump from place to place, from use case to use case, is very important. Uh, one of the funniest things when we initially launched was we had a lot of people using um, our, uh, like our amateurs for VR meetings. And we only had like a, like a limited amount of outfits, mostly like suits or something like this. And the biggest complaint from users weren't that avatars don't look good or they're slow, which you know the product was slow. I mean, you know, it was it was a shitty product when we launched that. You know, it was early days. <laughs> but the biggest complaint was I'm overdressed for my meeting. <laughs> that's pretty funny, right? It's virtual meeting, yeah. Yeah, I think that's such a good point. I think Previously, um, virtual fashion was maybe, or well, let's say virtual clothing was more associated with gaming. I think you had like yeah. skins. Remember when you could choose skins and that was associated with the weapon that you had. But now because we're becoming more and more digital, society is just becoming way more online than ever before. You're starting to see the amalgamation of different industries. So now it's gaming and the entertainment industry and fashion all merging into one. And then you're starting to see kind of variables that were important in each of those industries marrying together as well. So in the digital, let's say, gaming space, suddenly exclusivity is a thing. You know, suddenly being um, a part of a, 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 an exclusive group of people and gaining utility in the space is something that's becoming a little bit more important. And that is something that the luxury brands in fashion are pretty good at, right? Exclusivity and being part of something special. And so I think that's why we're starting to see more interest, greater growth. And I think it's just more accessible now for you and I, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's great. And I was thinking too, I was wondering, for example, if, um, so like I definitely agree with Casper and he knows I play a game that he's familiar with and, and I really like the way I look in there with all my skins and I want to have all the skins. So I spend obviously no money on clothing and physical reality, <laughs> but way too much on skins. And so, um, however, the thought, bringing this back to something that's practical for some probably in our audience who are thinking of ways, you know, how do you grow your business and that sort of thing. Um, as far as business owners, for example, and I think particularly you and David, for example, when you, when you try to think of ways that 
people want to look a certain way in immersive reality, how do you turn that into a monetary gain or a good business opportunity for you in physical reality as well? Yeah, I mean, as I'm mainly focused on, on AR experiences, um, I think first of all that AR is a very uh, interesting uh, way of basically filling the gap between the real world and the virtual world because it's, it's virtual but it's also real. So it's a nice bridge towards virtual worlds. Um, I also think it's a very interesting way for people to, you know, firstly uh, get in touch with, with virtual fashion in a way that it's very accessible. I mean, it exists in the, in, the, in the camera that's on your phone. You don't need any other, other hard, hardware or software. It's within your favorite social media apps. Um, and uh, I think that because we work for brands, mainly for, for fashion brands, um, we basically uh, create experiences for those brands. Um, and at the same time, we get to innovate, we get to uh, experiment within the space of virtual fashion. So um, uh, without brands, we couldn't be innovating, obviously, because you need money to innovate. Um, and I think it's also very interesting to see that these brands are very open to, to experiment, you know, and to see what works. And um, it's also uh, interesting to see that it, it, it came all from being a very gimmicky uh, application, you know, where you had like bunny ears and, and, and a bunny nose. And now actually it's a utility because you can create a virtual fashion of a physical piece of clothing you can try it out virtually. You can decide already if it's something for you, if it fits your style, uh, and you can then instantly buy it. You know, so we, we, we came from something that was, that was very like entertainment-wise to something that's very utility-wise. Um, and, and I think you, if you see that as, as you know, a business owner, um, then you can really take a lot of benefits from there. Yeah. Did you want to add anything to that, Tamelo? I always want to add something, Sonja, so I'll <laughs> hold back at some point. But um, I think just the question is, you know, um, if you want to start a business in this space, what should you be thinking about? And I think in this space, because everything is so transparent and because we're so interconnected at this point, a really good place to start is just being authentic about your intentions. Um, and I think the stage at which you are at when it comes to developing your business will obviously then determine what you're being authentic about. So if you're at the stage where you're just experimenting and you just want to try something out, tell your community that. Or if you're trying to build awareness or if you're trying to, there are various stages of your business that you'll find that you, it's, it's best to just be like um, transparent about your, what your intentions are. And I think by doing that, when you start a business, it just comes down to basic economics, de demand and supply. So if you're true about what it is, what value and what utility you can create, that audience, that supply will come your, or that demand will come your way. So look, I haven't started it, so I might be like no. way over my head over here, but I'm going back to my <laughs> economics one. <laughs> now, that actually brings me to the next question I was going to ask Joanna which is um, if we're kind of experimenting and just start where you are and see what you like and try new things, stuff like that. You and I have talked about that a little bit. And yeah. you mentioned, for example, that immersive reality can be a way to teach people how to design and play around with fabrics and things like that. So can you share a little bit more about that? And then I want to jump to Casper after you do that because I would like to know, for example, on the tail end of her question, how do you decide what ways you make those avatars? Like the things that you've made, you know, the scene that the people have their, their shirts or whatever, um, based on what she says, how did you decide that? And tell us like, you know, you get what I'm saying here. Okay. <laughs> so I think what's happening with AI is super interesting right now with Mid Journey and Dali, where anyone can imagine what they want and speak it into existence. Mm -hmm and can create digital fashion that way. Yeah. Um, but of course, the main tool that we use at the moment is Clo 3D or Marvelous Designer, which is the same company. Marvelous Designer is just 80% of what Clo 3D has. And really, it's a pattern making software. So uh, pattern making is the basis of clothing and garment construction. It's, we have a, a t-shirt that has a front, a back, and two sleeves. And we have to, you know, use mathematics as an, a way to have architecture for the body to create a pattern, which we put into Clo3D. 
And so I think what's interesting uh, for me about coming from the fashion industry is really wanting um, the designs to, to hold up and be as beautiful as possible. We can have all this design overlaid on top of uh, the pattern, um, but with the GDFAs, I really want to help educate people a little bit on the, the, the flow of fabrics and, and all that to be able to then mm, nice. bring their fashion in the best way possible. Um, and I know that, you know, dress, uh, Dress X right now yeah. within Roblox, 50% of their money is coming from Roblox. 50% is coming from the app. I think gaming is a real way for people to start a business and make money off digital fashion because they need digital fashion. People like you want to, yeah. to <laughs> I play Roblox with um, my girlfriend's five-year-old and she calls me all the time, you know, because she wants to uh, use my money to, yeah. to buy her fashion. And so we need more creators to let yeah, us yeah. all explore fashion within games. Yeah, and what's really funny is I think one thing, you know, early on a few years ago, at, before we had consumer VR, just like at the very beginning of that um, wave in 2016, 2017, and people were saying, oh, you know, VR is going to um, make a situation where people aren't social anymore. It's going to remove socialization. When I see people walking around doing this on their oh, phones, totally. it's very um, a solo activity or if they're on their computer typically, but there's a very solo. When you're in an immersive environment or an AR even where you're, you know, you're interacting with others, it's very interactive. And so what you said is interesting because that's exactly right. Like, and again, you know, I'm not the only person in the world like this, surely, but I do think there's a huge market for people who really are very much interested in this new way to express themselves through fashion that they either never cared about or maybe it was intimidating. For me, it's intimidating like I, I don't get stressed generally, but I do not shop. Like the thought of that is just like, that would never appeal to me. And so I think, oh wow, they look so beautiful. <laughs> well, that's nice. And then I'm done with the thought. But going into VR, I, I literally spend so much time looking at the different ways you can combine the textures and the patterns and you know should this do you want it this way or this way or whatever it's fascinating I, I think, think it is no fascinating. No one's judging you. Yeah and, and I realize That's, that but I think yeah. it's interesting you that it. you're doing things that are making a whole new avenue for people who um, you would maybe that was never anticipated. I think that's what we're trying to figure out at the Fabricant at the moment, um, is that you know, we want our platform to be as interactive as possible, and we want you to co-create. We call our visitors who come into our marketplace co-creators, but it's to what degree do you want to co-create? Yeah. Do you want to design your item from scratch, or do you simply want to add color and texture and a few accessories along the way? And so developing the product for us is a very interesting perspective. Um, also, just circling back to the, to the tools, mm -hmm. um, right now we're using what we currently have, what's existing out in the market, but if we're talking about building the product for the fabricant, what is that? Is it tools? that enable the user to create their own designs? Or is it a tool in the back end that does it for on behalf of the user and then it's more collaborative in nature? Um, and so at this point, we, you know, we, we're talking about creating wearables, but it's also about, okay, but where are you going to wear those wearables? Um, because then that also then determines like the quality of the garment that you're going to wear and then that quality is then influenced by again the tools that you're going to use in order to achieve that quality etc so it really is about um, uh, catering for a, a wide audience that do want to be involved and do want to have virtual um, uh, clothing and fashion but we just still trying to figure out to what degree that creation should be yeah, that's what, a minute ago, I, I didn't jump back over to you, but that was the question basically I was wanting to ask you. And then David, you can hop in there too after Casper, but um, 
what should it be? What should be the limitation on that? Or how do you balance out that question? I think like what you said initially was very interesting. Like you spend a lot of time virtually like designing yourself. It's funny because we, we, we actually see like there's, 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 a, there's a large group of users who spend more time customizing than avatar and actually playing the game. Mm -hmm. um, and and if, you, if, if you look at the, like, the younger audience, the Gen Z is uh, playing Roblox, like, for younger audience, like, they're still young. Their identity is fluid, which means they're trying to figure out uh, how they should be perceived by the world. Uh, and that's the reason why a lot of those kids nowadays are spending a lot of time customizing their out there. They're still they're using this as a tool to actually figure out also who they are as a person, like how they should be perceived. Now, the question around like how do we actually design uh, like the outfits or or or, or how, how how to design like the, the the wearables essentially? Well, we think that we are not smart enough to do to make this decision. Uh, <laughs> like as a company, we make a, for, for us it's important that avatars represent a large enough group to, so people feel that they can belong. So we have. Anything from she hops to to to, uh, to, to different like uh, cultural elements present in the product, so people feel that there's enough diversity. The other thing we do is we do believe that people love to follow brands, and what I mean by that is like usually brands have a specific story or values that they believe in, and by wearing that certain wearable. They show to the outside world that I believe in those values. Like if you were uh, uh, a certain brand, it kind of tells something about this person. Like if you were full Nike, you might, you know, I, my first perception of you would be something maybe a little sporty or something like this. Uh, so we do do things. Uh, we 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 make sure on our end that the, the the diversity in terms of like the the cultural elements is present in the outer editor. And then we make sure that uh, you know right now we work with brands one to one, so we have a lot of like what we call like digital first brands, like anything from fabricants to dressex to beyond to artifacts and so on. So we call them digital first. They're the ones that uh, create digital assets and then uh, you know share a story while they're doing that. And you know if people really buy into it, they want to wear it and they want to show it all outside world that you know this is what I believe in. Then we do the same thing with fashion brands and we take like the Nikes and artifacts and 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 uh, sorry uh, Nikes and Adidas and New Balance and uh, Dior's and you know, all, all of all of the luxury and 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 uh, and high fashion and uh, like everything we try to take their assets in as well so people can feel that you know there's something for them so they feel you know, belonging like there's like the funnier stories like internally where we have like we we release a new outfit we pull and bear or something that's like kind of like a, not the luxury brand and some of the employees come to us and say like hey my kid is now super happy because they can relate they're wearing the same brand physically and now they can use the same for their avatars which is a, which is a pretty pretty cool thing to see so our job is basically to open this up and uh, and allow brands to flourish and build their own products by telling the stories that they love so they can build those relationships with the users and we basically enable this we're not the fashion brand and we don't know what everybody wants uh, and it's impossible for us as one company to cater to everyone needs uh, it's usually like if there's a luxury brand that's catered to a certain type of audience, it's high fashion, a certain type of audience. You like white shirts, I like black shirts. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're trying to do our best to just like be open and enable. And that's the way we solve the problem of being as diverse as possible. That's great. David, actually, I'm going to switch gears a little with the question and start into the next one. Just so the audience knows, here in about five minutes, we're going to open up the floor for questions for them. So be ready if you're thinking of anything. We'd love to have you step up to the mic then. Um, I'll tell you when we're ready for that. But first, I was going to ask everybody for the last few minutes to finish up with a th some thoughts on Casper was talking about diversity and how will digital fashion influence our course or journey into the metaverse, into immersive reality, is that relevant? Like how, you know, is it something that's going to create more? And the reason I ask it that way, is it going to create more opportunities for everyone and potentially greater um, acceptance 
or do we need to be cautious about it creating, like, like I can't remember who said, um, if you have certain brands, I think it was you, Tamelo, and you have exclusivity, you know, how do you balance out it going into the metaverse and creating a greater diversity, accessibility, inclusivity? Because some of those things it is going to do, but I think it also may have the potential to create other problems, possibly. So um, what are your thoughts on that? And David, I'll let you start on that. Uh, yeah, I think it, it depends how you approach it because you know if you're looking at avatars, yeah, you need to make sure that everybody can relate with, with the avatar, you know, because it's it's your body and it, it's it's yourself. But if you're looking at fashion, I think it's it's basically up to the brands what what you know what's going to happen. That's the same as in the real world, you know. We have a, a physical identity, and uh, nowadays, you know, you also have like a digital identity, and you also want to be able to 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 make sure that you you know relate to that digital identity and that you. Uh, uh, that you have the assets to, to do that. I mean, for example, is if, if I look at what we create, uh, I mean, you cannot just create a, a virtual fashion brand and think that everybody wants to have your fashion. You know, there needs to be a story behind it, and, and there, there, you know, you need to, to listen to the audience. Uh, for example, we did an experiment where, where we created like this, this uh, uh, iridescent, glowing puffer jacket, right? Uh, and we just launched it on Snapchat, and we, we, we made another one, and we put the brand Montclair on it. And if you uh, s s look at the engagement between those pieces that were virtually the same, the one with the Montclair brand, which it wasn't even from Montclair, uh, from Montclair because we, we just launched the prototype, I think it had like 500,000 500, times more uh, users uh, engaging with it uh, compared to the one without the brand. You know, because uh, it's already an established b brand, and I think therefore there are a lot of chances for established br brands to dive onto the virtual space because you already have your story, you only have to bas basically virtualize it. So the branded puffy jacket had more interaction or engagement or attention than the non branded yeah, one? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Usually I have this problem that um, I'm not good artistically. So I can't do the thing that the designers are doing. So usually what I end up creating looks like shit. And the ones that designers create, I like this. Uh, yeah. Because it's, like, it's just like, I don't have the skills, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you know what you like. Yes, right? I know when I see it. Uh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, why, that's why we have people like this who, <laughs> you know, because um, you, know, you know fashion so well. Now, do you actually design, Tamelo? Because I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, you do the designing part. Yeah, that's so great. <laughs> yeah, um, at The Fabricant, we um, collaborate with well-known um, designers, um, and we, we kind of want to make it as open as possible, but keep that quality. Um, I think Joanna referred to the fact that it is, it's a long process to design and produce a garment, and there are lots of considerations, the movement of the fabric, the way it wraps around the architecture of the female body, which that's a stolen line for Joanna, she said it so beautifully, how clothing drapes off the body, those things are important. Um, because it also is part of the experience of seeing garments come to life without being able to touch them or feel them or smell them or whatever. Um, so yes, we do have hot experts, um, hot designers, um, but we're really, really keen to open it up to, to, the, rest, to the rest of the world um, and anyone else who's interested in designing. So you were talking about the Fabricant having an academy. Yes. What is that? Yes. So um, we realize that it's important to keep that quality and standard. And so initially we had started approaching um, designers who have the experience in pattern making and grading, etc. cetera. Um, but then of course, it's also, um, it also involves using tools that are largely associated with like, like software um, that isn't native to the fashion space, mm -hmm. like Unreal Engine, for example. So we're starting to see a gap where we need to empower people with certain skills, design skills, to use the software and tools to provide um, uh, fashion-related or immersive fashion. Um, and I think that's, that's what's so exciting about this space, um, is that regardless of what skill set you have, at least in the fashion industry, going into the Web3 space not only allows you to have a few, like, be future-proof in your career, but it allows you to harness what you've already learned from the traditional space and to improve what we're currently building in the space. We actually need the marriage of the traditional skill set and the future of what we think immersive fashion and digital fashion looks like. 
So yeah, I think and there's it huge opportunity there, and that's why we want to, we want to, yeah, there's the yeah. academy there. <laughs> So for me, I'm excited about, uh, you know, we, we have a category uh, in the GDFAs of a sketch for under 12, where, you know, they, even they can participate in, in, in digital fashion and having an idea, because the future is about the ideas that we think up with AI and everything coming into play. So, uh, you know, lowering that bar so they can have the idea of what they want and then turning that into the digital fashion for them and seeing their idea come into play. Um, there are also other tools that I have, a, a beta that I've started um, to have access to, which lowers the bar to entry. Uh, so you don't have to know a lot of the software, and you just have to have the idea of the design and what you want. So there are more tools coming, which is exciting. Um, but you know, also the yeah the Unreal engines, and and the way to to show the fabulousness of of the fashion is is really where you know more verses that have more poly is That's what I'm excited about too. Yeah, I think it's great that you're doing that and I love the idea of providing an opportunity for younger people who are interested in in fashion design to do things like that. It is a new career path for yeah, sure. Yeah, it absolutely is. And I think that it's important for people to remember. Remember when you were young, you know, when we were really young, when I was six years old, I thought I want to be a writer. I knew I loved to write. I've published eight books. I knew I wanted to do that, and I did that when I grew up. If I loved fashion and knew I wanted to do that, I would want a way to do that. For me, it was easy. I just needed pen and paper. Right. But if I wanted to be a digital fashion designer, if I wanted to design things for David and Casper, I would want a way to practice that and learn my skills. So all the things that you guys do, it ties together so much, and it's just really, you know, it's very cool that you're doing that. It's really important. And it is in so many ways to me, it sounds like a weird fit, but it is important for people to be able to use those types of things that you're doing and the, moving the industry forward so we can um, express ourselves however we want, wherever we want, you know? <laughs> but let's take some questions now. Did you guys from the audience have any questions to come up and ask them? Yeah, there's a mic up here, if you can walk up, please. Thank you. Hi, Victor. Thanks a lot for this session. I'm more like you. I don't like going shopping. <laughs> and I only wear like three colors uh, clothes, like white, black, and blue, maybe. <laughs> but recently, I visited a VR museum. And it was like an expo, so colorful, with your geometric style. And, and I like bought the, 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 those digital clothes with a lot of colors, and suddenly I surprised myself because I was like thinking, okay, this is a new me. <laughs> My in real life me wouldn't wear this, or yes. And suddenly I, I was there like starting to think uh, if it was maybe a good idea to challenge my vision of my in real life uh, version of me. And, and that's my question. How do you think that virtual fashion, because we, because we tend to think that how physical fashion is evolving into virtual fashion. But how do you think like virtual fashion is going to redefine who we are in real life and our physical ones, how, how this is relating these, with these virtual uh, brands and virtual clothes with our real life uh, style? That's such a great Beautiful question. Fashion. I love it. It's a great question. Thank you. Yeah. And who would like to take a first stab at that? David, you want to take yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, good question, definitely. Um, and I think it's very interesting because obviously when you know you have virtual fashion, you have also a lot of data, right? If, if you launch a collection, you can very, um, uh, very closely follow on which uh, items perform very well. And I think that's also an opportunity for the items that perform very well or that are you know, very popular, that you can maybe create them in, in physical fashion. And it's already, already what Artifact uh, is also doing. You know, yeah. I mean, they have a virtual collection, which you basically first, first buy virtually as an NFT, and then you can forge it into a real item. And then on top of that, they also have an, an AR experience when you point your phone on the, on the sweater, there are coming wings behind you or anything. 
You know, so basically there it's, it's all coming together. So yeah, I think it's super interesting and I think it's definitely something that we're going to see uh, more. Yeah, uh, I mean, the more time you see people like spending time online, you get used to the online version of me, uh, the new online version of me. Like you can see now there's like kids playing more, more games and like more time being spent online. You can kind of like go and see the trend there and it's like pretty in incredible to, to, to look at this. And like personal experience, like I've actually, like we, we've done like a couple of collaborations together where we've put like some of the new Adidas uh, shoes collection there or Tommy Hilfiger, like uh, new collections to Ready Plan Me. And I've, I've started like using those assets like virtually and then actually I bought all of them physically as well. <laughs> because I, I feel like I kind of want to look like my avatar. So it's like, like avatars are all, like our, our virtual identity is also like, uh, like we, we try to design them as a better version of uh, ourselves, and this is the aspiration. And then, when you have the means, then you try to replicate this aspiration physically as well. But what this creates is it creates an opportunity for a brand to start a relationship with a very low cost with the user, and then build upsell essentially. So it basically builds a very strong business case for someone to be a wearable in 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 a, in a consumer experiences that has a very good retention. So you get used to this asset, and you're like. Why don't I wear that physically? And then you kind of go from there. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I want to just in. add to that, because I think that was such a beautiful question. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, I think the reason why a lot of people don't actually like shopping is because there is limited variety. So you go out there, you waste your day trying to find something, and you just can't find it. And there's only one of you, and you're walking around a mall, and you can't <laughs> find something or you're shopping online and there are so many options, it's almost overwhelming. There are like thousands of garments and you're like, how am I going to find something? Um, so it's almost, you always met with a sense of uh, lack and disappointment. Whereas in the virtual space, there's almost an unlimited number or version of you. And so you can start trying things out with very little effort, <laughs> actually with the movement of a finger, <laughs> right? Which then means that you've got so much more time and space to explore. And then what starts happening is because you, I think we mentioned this a couple of times, that self-expression, because you're starting to figure out what I like, what I don't like, what I like, what I don't like, at like max speed compared to real life, you then start forming some sort of emo emotional connection to whatever's starting to appeal with you, to you, the bright colors, la 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 la. And then that's when the branding becomes important. Because when someone starts identifying that bright colors matter to me, and there's a brand that's all about bright colors, self-expression, you then form that emotional relationship with the brand, and then that's when it starts translating into, I'm going to buy that t-shirt. And even if you're still wearing your black, white, and blue t-shirts, but guess what? This time, it has the NFT, your NFT on it, or whatever the case may be. Yeah, it doesn't have to be radical. You don't have to have flaming things or <laughs> coming off your shoulders you in the real world. Well, you can. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> you can. I would. Um, so I think that's how it, and I've actually experienced that myself. Um, it was, this is a silly example, I'll keep it short, but it, it, it actually came to changing my hair. I used to have short hair and I wanted to go long and I kept on thinking, oh my gosh, what are people going to think? They, are you not going <laughs> to recognize me and what's going to happen, la la la, right? And then I thought, no, if you can do it in the metaverse, sorry, if you can do it in the immersive world, why can't I do it in real life? And I don't think anyone's going to have a problem with it. And no one had a problem with it. And it was super liberating for me. So beautiful question, because I think that's a really nice direction to kind of marry the two worlds together. And I want to finish up with one last thing and say, the, we don't have time to go into this. But just for you all to know, for your information, I, I deal with a lot of kids in VR. Like I'm in immersive environments playing games with them. And I think, I think some, you know, I think Casper does too. but. You know, we see a lot of those kids. The branding question and that question right there, I personally um, am taking what I want and put this in VR. So like when I'm in Horizon Worlds, for example, I look exactly like this. <laughs> but when I'm in everything else, I'm on, you know, I have my robot, I've got my fancy Ready Player One avatar. I've got all these fancy cool things that I really love. But, um, but as far as the branding, just for you all to know, I'm not sure what businesses you're all exactly in, but it goes the other way with being that way in real life. And this is important for like fabricant and stuff. 
the, the way I see kids using that in the environments I'm in are the games or experiences they like and enjoy most. They talk about it constantly in the games or in the experiences. Wow, man, I wish I had socks, shoes, shirt, pants, whatever to wear that represented how I am in this experience. So that's just something to end on, to be thinking about, uh, you know, for marketing purposes, you're growing your business or whatever, and so just something um, to stop with. We're running a little bit over, and I don't want to get in trouble with who's ever in charge of this main stage here. <laughs> but um, thank you all so much for coming. Let's give them a great round of applause, and we're glad that you're here today. Thank you. Thank you.